Amen. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for bringing us here. And the purpose for the study, you instill in every heart and produce in every life so that the study of the word will be beneficial, profitable for everyone, in everyone, through everyone, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. I could barely hear you. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. I welcome everyone to our Bible study once again. A Bible study is not that we just come as usual. It has a purpose. The word of God is given for a purpose. The word of God is read and learned and heard for a purpose. The word of God is understood, meditated upon, prayed about. The word of God is lived out for a purpose, for salvation, for sanctification, for our strength, for our steadfastness, and for our going forth steadily in the Lord, being planted and rooted on the rock of ages and whatever may be happening around us or in a nation where we'll stand firm because the word points us to how to be steady, solid, steadfast in the Lord. Today, we're coming to James chapter 1, reading from verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Tonight, the topic is the blessed Bible believing doers of the word. The blessed Bible believing doers of the word. It says, be ye doers of the word, which word, repent and believe in the gospel. Repent, we come to the Lord for the first time. And as we come, he confronts us with our lifestyle in the past. And he says that lifestyle in the past will not get us to heaven. And here we are, we want to get to heaven. What do I do? Repent ye and believe the gospel. Be ye doers of the word. Since you've been learning the word, have you done that? Have you repented? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you take me to the place where it happened? How it happened? And can you tell the exact thing that happened after you repented and believed on the Lord? Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Did he say follow peace with all men? And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord is a command. It's a demand he makes upon our lives. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Blessed and the pure in heart for they shall see God. Have you done that? You've heard that many times. Have you done that? Tarry ye. In the city of Jerusalem, until the promise of the Father comes upon you, for you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Have you done that? Have you tarried? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We're weak spiritually because we've not been waiting upon the Lord. Tarry, wait until the Holy Ghost comes upon your life. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and not be drunk with wine. Have we done that? Have we been filled? Are we full of the Holy Ghost? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. A command, be not hearers of the word only, but be ye doers of the word. 
have we done that? A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, even as I have loved you. Does love control our lives? Does love channel our lives, direct our lives? And do we do that every time to everyone? Love your enemy too and pray for them that persecute you. The point is, he wants us to be doers of the word, not hearers only, not learners only, not preachers only, not leaders only, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The blessed, Bible believing doers of the word. We're dividing the study tonight to three parts. Number one, the forgetful self, deluded hearers of the word. The people look here, after they have heard, they get up, they go home, and they leave as if they heard nothing. As if they learned nothing, as if they have not been exposed to the word and the word has not been exposed to them. They are forgetful, they are self deceived, they are self deluded hearers of the word. Number two, the faithful self denying hearers in his will. The faithful, the people who come faithfully, and the study of the word is not a waste. The study of the word does not go in one ear and come out the other ear. They are faithful to the Lord, the Lord of the word. They are faithful to the word, the word of the Lord. And that faithfulness makes them to pray and makes them to have the grace, the strength, the purpose, the passion that they want to be obedient to the word of the Lord. And they have to deny themselves. Because self will want us to go the other way. Self will want us to go the way of tradition and the way of habit and the way of the past life. But as we deny ourselves and we remain faithful unto the Lord in every little thing, in every big thing, those are the people that are blessed as they study the word and they apply the word to their own lives. Number three, the fruitful self forgetting harvesters in this way. In this way, is, uh, you know, as you read the Acts of the Apostles, uh, Christianity is referred to as this way. The path of the Lord, the plan of the Lord, and the will of the Lord, and the work we have referred to as this way. And if we're going to be fruitful, we'll have to forget ourselves. That's the major problem of humanity. They think about themselves too much and too often. But the people who bear fruit in life, the people who are profitable in life are the people that forget themselves and they walk in this way of the Lord. And those people will be harvesting. They'll be helpful to the other people. They'll give hope to other people because they live a self-forgetting life. Number one now, the forgetful, self-deluded hearers of the word we're looking at james chapter one and i'm reading from verse 22 but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves isn't that a terrible it is it's a serious sin when satan deceives us and we're sucked in into a false system it's a terrible thing when neighbors deceive us is the most dangerous and the most uh, damnable when we deceive ourselves and it says if we're not doers of the word and we're hearers only we deceive our own selves verse 23 in verse 23 for if any be a hearer of the word any anyone that like Judas Iscariot he heard all that sermon on the mount 
he heard everything Jesus said. He heard every promise, every precept, every proclamation of Christ, but he was just a hearer of the word and not a doer. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a mirror, in a glass. And then he tells us in verse 24, he says, And for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. He forgeteth the sinner who needs salvation. He forgets he's a backslider who needs restoration. He forgets he's weak and he needs strength. He forgets he's unholy, unrighteous, and he needs the touch, the transforming touch of the Lord to make him righteous and holy. He forgets he is a forgetful person and he needs the grace of God to always bring the word in remembrance, the forgetful self, the loaded hearers of the world. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the forgetful self deceived hearers of the world. Number two, the fruitless self deluded handlers of his world. Number three is the filthy self defiling haters of his word of this word number one number one is the forgetful self deceived hearers of the word again we have read james chapter one verse 22 to verse 24 we're looking at galatians chapter 6 and we're looking at verse 3 in galatians chapter 6 reading from verse 3 but for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing he deceiveth himself he deceiveth himself he is a sinner he accounts himself to be a sage he deceives himself it's a backslider and he thinks of himself to be a believer is a self deliver is a falling person and he thinks of himself of herself as a faithful person he deceives himself he is hardened and yet he feels that he is holy he deceives himself for if a man or if a woman or if a church man a church woman if a church goer or a church member think himself herself to be something when he is nothing he deceiveth himself he deceiveth himself and deceiving oneself sometimes starts in a little way and then it expands and then it becomes a habit and if somebody keeps that habit of deceiving himself all through his life he enters into eternity being deceived thinking he's going to heaven and he lands in hell because if a man think himself to be something to be somebody when he is nothing in the sight of god he deceives himself in hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 5 hebrews 12 verse 5 and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you ye have forgotten can you think of yourself all you've heard all these many years message of salvation sanctification holiness purity of heart message of love message of the necessity of standing firm on the word of god of earnestly contending for the faith in everything you do everywhere you go every plan you make earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints all we have heard are you remembering 
Am I remembering? Am I taking it to heart when I'm planning something? When I want to take a decision? When I want to go forth here or there? Have I forgotten? It says to the Hebrew Christians, "Ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not the chastening, the correction of the Lord." No faith when thou art rebuked of him. Do we forget that the word of God was given, given by inspiration for correction, for reproof. And then when the word of God comes to us and we're corrected and we're reproved, how do we react? How do we respond? Our response will show whether we have forgotten that exhortation that we should not faint when God rebukes us or chastises us but you know it's not going to come from heaven and stand before us and rebuke us it's going to use his mouthpiece his watchmen his preachers the people he has sent for so that they reveal the mind of God unto us. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chastineth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, if he endure chastening, if he endure correction, if he endure rebuke, God deal it with you as with sons for what son is he whom the father chastineth not verse 8 in verse 8 but if he be without chastisement if God becomes fed up with you and there's no chastisement there's no rebuke there's no correction a frame as Lord idols, leave him alone. I'm reaching unto him the great things of my law, and he has counted that as a strange thing, leave him alone. When God leaves a person alone like that, if he be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons? It tells us in Second Peter chapter 1, in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 8, For if these things be in you and abound, that is, if the virtues and the glorious grace of God abides in us and is abounding, it says, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, verse 9 says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. He has forgotten that he came to the Lord so he could be purged and he was purged and so he could be prepared for heaven and he was saved so he can be on his way to heaven but now he does not continue learning he does not continue doing what the Lord had been teaching him he has now forgotten that he was purged from his old sins and then in verse 10 in verse 10 wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling an election sure for if ye do if ye do doers of the word if ye do not hear us only if ye do these things ye shall never fall we're coming to number two there number two is the fruitless self-deluded handlers of his word not only the hearers but the handlers the people that know the word of god and even handle the word of god and they teach other people 
and they lead other people but they themselves are not doing what they teach they preach they don't perform they declare but they don't do the word of god those handlers of his word are self-deluded and they're fruitless it tells us in second timothy chapter 3 verse 5 having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away having a form of godliness they talk they preach they declare they know the doctrine but it's only in form they do not have the grace and the strength to do what they preach those handlers of the word it says don't even encourage them by listening to them they say and they do not look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says ever learning ever preaching ever proclaiming ever emphasizing doctrine and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth and those who are closest to them like their wives like their children they will know he knows the world he knows it in the head he doesn't have it in the heart and the friends who are close to him they know that he has a form of godliness but he does not have the power to obey and the power to do what he proclaims in Luke chapter 13 reading from verse 6 Luke 13 verse 6 he spake also this parable a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereof you understand the fruit he's talking about the fruit of the spirit the love the joy the peace the long suffering the fidelity the faith the meekness the goodness and the temperance the self-control that that's those are the fruits that the lord is looking for as we read the word as we study the word but he came and sought fruit thereon and found none then in verse 7 it says then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard behold these three years i come seeking fruit i come seeking fruit i come seeking fruit as the lord reaches out to us as the lord speaks his word to us as the lord tells us i came to seek and to save that which was lost it was that fruit of salvation to come through us as he reaches out to us and he even prays for us sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth after the prayer he wants us to agree with that prayer key in to that prayer pray that same prayer and receive the benefit of the sanctifying word you'll come you'll be seeking fruit in our lives and he said the three years i come seeking fruit on this fig tree this fig tree referring to you in particular and find none cut it down why compareth it the ground then in verse 8 he tells us and he answering said unto him lord let it alone this year also give him a longer robe but it's limited this year also the lord will not um, you know take a uh, uh, patient infinitely eternally indefinitely if we're not bearing fruit my spirit shall not always strive with man for he also is a man 
the Lord is not going to be waiting indefinitely. He gives us chance. Another chance comes today that we are hearing the word of God. And he wants us to be doers of that word. He says, till I shall dig about it and dunk it. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and if it bear fruit, Jonah has a second chance. If he now does what he has heard, go to Nineveh and pray to eat the preaching that I bid you. If he will not be a doer of the word, and that's what the Lord is asking of us. We failed in the past, fruitless in the past, unfaithful in the past. A chance comes now to be a doer of the word. If it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. It tells us in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 6, reading from verse 7. Hebrews 6, verse 7. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh out upon, upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. A man sows the seed, God sends the rain, and then the seed brings forth fruit. That ground receives blessing, blessing from the Lord. But look at verse 8. In verse 8, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. That which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. When we shall bear nourishing fruit, nourishing figs, because labor had been expended on us, if we bear the right fruit. Profitable fruit, pleasant fruit. It says, well, the Lord will give more blessings. But instead of bearing the right fruit, instead of bearing redemptive fruit, fruit that shows that we're redeemed, that he has made us righteous, the fruit that shows that we have met Christ, we're in Christ, and we're new creatures in Christ. That's the fruit he expects, but if we bear the works of the flesh, if we bear the nature of Satan, if we bear the outcome of depravity, he says, he is rejected and is nice unto cursing, and whose end is to be burnt. Matthew chapter 7. Reading from verse 17, it says, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's character. That's lifestyle. That's behavior. That's habit. In verse 18, it says, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. A saved soul cannot bring forth evil fruit. A standing spirit, standing in the Lord, abiding in the Lord, he cannot bear evil fruit. A truthful soul cannot bear lying, deceptive language. He says over here, a good tree, the one made good by the Lord will not bring forth, cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19, in verse 19, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, cut down, and cast into the fire. Understand? Those are the words of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ spoke about that tormenting fire, that eternal fire, 
that unquenchable fire more than any other preacher, any other one in the whole of the Bible. Jesus said, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Verse 20, verse 20 says, wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them by their fruits it's not by their testimony oh i always you know come to the church i always hear the preaching i even write notes no no not by what you say by your fruit by their fruits you shall know them are you free from the works of the flesh by their fruits you shall know them do you have the fruit of the spirit and do you live as if you are a member of the body of Christ and what Christ should have done that's what you're doing by their fruit you shall know them verse 21 in verse 21 not everyone that says Lord Lord who says Lord Lord the preachers say Lord Lord the so-called believers say Lord Lord even the foolish virgins say Lord Lord open unto us religious people traditional people they say lord lord denominational people they say lord lord and jesus said not everyone that says unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth he that doeth he that doeth we need grace he that doeth we need focus he that doeth we need determination he that doeth we need decision i'll be a doer of the word he that doeth only he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven verse 22 in verse 22 many will say unto me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name that's where some people put all their emphasis and it gives them popularity it gives them the respect of people around them and in thy name i've cast out devils that's where some people concentrate they focus their attention they'll fast and pray to cast out devils they'll not fast and pray to cast out the anger in them the evil in them the bad habit in them the defiling lifestyle in them they think if they can cast out devils they think that's enough jesus said no that's not enough we must have christ living in us and living us through us and they said and in thy name i've cast out many devils and we have done many wonderful works look at verse 23 in verse 23 and then will i profess unto them i never knew you what sad day a great proclamation on the final day when they cannot return and repent on the final day when they cannot make right what was wrong the lord says i'll tell them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity look at number three number three here we're looking at the filthy self defiling haters of this world the people who are defiled by themselves even when there's no other person around to defile them How is that possible satan was not tempted by another angel he was lucifer and he defiled himself he brought up the idea himself i will be like unto god and the pride defiled him feel the self defiling haters of this world in jude chapter one 
reading from verse 10. Jude chapter 1, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. They don't know that thing, they are not sure of that thing. and yet they speak evil of that thing they know not. They do not understand the weighty matters of the word of God, yet they speak evil of those things they know not, they understand not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves they corrupt themselves uh, there are people they have the lifestyle the habits and the thinking uh, and the thoughts of sin uh, and even when there's nobody to defile them they defile themselves in verse 11 verse 11 says woe unto them for they have gone the way of Cain Cain had never seen anybody killing another person and yet something came out of him that what nobody had ever done neither Adam nor Eve and he was born the firstborn never had he seen anybody killing another one and yet he brought the idea he invented the idea and he says woe unto them for they have gone the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in again seeing of Cory. Then in verse 12, verse 12 says, These are sports in your feast of charity. That means they come to the meeting, they come to the assembly, the fellowship. For the people of God in the church as if they were part of the fellowship of the people of God when they feast with you and feeding themselves without fear plows they are without water carried about of winds trees whose fruit withered without fruit twice dead plucked up by the roots backsliders and then in verse 13 it says in verse 13 raging waves of the sea forming out their own shame when they talk they are forgotten that what they are talking about is shameful and with glee with delight with excitement they tell of the foolish things they have done of the sinful things they have done they relate of the shameful lifestyle they have lived. They enjoy even talking about that. And yet, they go to church, they come to church, they read the Bible, they study the Bible, and they delight in those shameful, shameful things they've done in the past, which they're still doing. And it says, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever is reserved for them the blackness of darkness even forever in second timothy chapter 4 reading from verse 3 second timothy chapter 4 verse 3 for the time will come the time has now come this was written about 2000 years ago the time will come at that time in the future but now it's here the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine they love motivation they love excitement and they love all the things the preachers say that make them laugh in their sins make them rejoice in their evil but to hear the doctrine of repentance of salvation of the new covenant and the new creature in the new covenant to hear the life 
that is properly lived in the grace of God. Uh -uh. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own laws shall they heed to themselves, teachers have been itching ears. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables, unto stories, unto some things. You know, they met this, they met that. You know, that make people inquisitive, curious. They want to hear that. But the doctrine, the teaching, the solid exhortation that will take them, make them repent and take them to heaven, that they don't enjoy. In Hosea chapter 8, Reading from verse 11. Hosea chapter 8, verse 11. Because Ephraim has made many altars to sin. Altars shall be unto him to sin. Then in verse 12, he says, I, God talking, I have written to him the great things of my Lord. I've written unto him the weightier things in my word. I've written unto him the essential things of heavenly minded uh, pilgrims. I've written unto him the great things of my love. But they were counted as a strange thing that a man would live free from sin, strange to them. That a man would have a circumcised heart to love God with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind. A strange thing that a man will resist temptation and overcome temptation and overcome the tempter to them. It's a strange thing that a man will be holy, that a man will be sanctified, that a man will live a life pleasing unto God, strange unto them, that our thoughts, our mind, our will, our decision, our desire, our devotion will be totally consecrated, surrendered unto the Lord. For them, that's the strange thing. Who can live in this world and not sin, and not continue in sin? Who can live in this world and not give bribes and take bribes for them? It's the same thing. I am reaching to him the great things of my Lord, but they are counted as a strange thing. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, the faithful self-denying hearers in his will we're looking at james chapter 1 verse 22 it says but be ye doers of the world and not hearers only deceiving your own selves verse 25 in verse 25 but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. He, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Three things we're looking at. Number one, looking into the perfect law of liberty. Number two, living by the perfect love of the Lord. Number three, loaded with his perfect liberality for life. Look at number one. Number one, looking into the perfect law of liberty. It tells us in James chapter 1, verse 25. James chapter 1, verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty is the word of God, is the Bible, the old covenant, the new covenant that is referring to as the perfect law of liberty. The word of God is pure and is perfect and the word of God liberates us, frees us and leads us 
into the liberty we have in Christ. That's why it says we look into the perfect law of liberty. And it says he continueth therein. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. And we look at some 19, reading from verse 7, the perfect law of liberty. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. If we truly look into the perfect law of liberty, if we truly look into the word of God, the perfect word of God, it will show us our imperfection. It will show us our iniquity. It will show us our transgression. And it will also show us the word that cleanses us. Wash me, and I shall be white as snow. Purge me, and I shall be whiter than snow. It's the word that shows us our imperfection, that also shows us the perfect one, that also shows us how we can be so cleansed and so purged that it perfects us. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple turn. It tells us in verse 8. In verse 8, it says, The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. In verse 9, verse 9, the fear of the Lord to depart from evil. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together in verse 10 in verse 10 more to be desired at thee the law of the lord the statutes of the lord the commandments of the lord more to be desired at thee than gold yea than, than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb it tells us in second timothy Chapter 3, reading from verse 16, all scripture, not some, all scripture, the one spoken directly by Christ, all scripture, the one that the apostles received, all of them, Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and Peter and Paul and John and all the people that God used in the New Testament to give us the New Testament, all scripture and everything we've had in the Old Testament, all from Genesis to Revelation, nobody to subtract, nobody to take away, and nobody to add anything. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The scriptures do not instruct us how to sin, how to fall, how to be corrupt, how to be defiled. If anyone is sinful, we didn't get that from scripture. That's coming out of the depraved mind of man or woman but the scripture is given so that it will teach us doctrine give us reproof give us correction and instruction in righteousness verse 17 it says that the man of god the child of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works that's what the word does. That's why it says in Isaiah chapter 34, reading from verse 16, Seek ye out the book of the Lord, 
the book of the Lord, the Holy Bible. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, and none shall want her mate. For my mouth, the Lord is talking, it has commanded, and my spirit as it has gathered them. We're looking at number two there. Number two, we look into the perfect law of liberty. Number two now, we live by the perfect love of the Lord. The perfect love of the Lord. That's how we live. If we look at his law, it directs us to the purging and the cleansing and, and the redemption and the righteousness. And then we now live by the perfect love of the Lord. It tells us in Matthew chapter 22, reading from verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That's the principle by which we live. And we never take vacation from that. We never say today, I don't want to love the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. I want to do things today as if I'm on holidays in the house, outside the house, on the train, on the road, in the bus, in the village, in the town, in the place of work, anywhere we are, and in any condition we are. This does not depend on I feel good today, I feel bad today, I feel sad today, I feel sorrowful today. No, all the time when we have Christ living on the inside of us and we're living by the perfect love of the Lord, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. And with all thy might, look at verse 40 there. In verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's including loving your neighbor as yourself. We're looking at uh, Romans chapter 13. We're reading from verse 8. Romans 13, verse 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. You owe everyone your neighbor. You owe everyone love. It's a debt you must pay. And you pay that every time. A neighbor, a stranger, a friend, a foe, husband, wife, children, parents, members of the church, anyone, everyone. This is what we owe. We owe it to one another to love one another. And it says, For he that loveth another has fulfilled the Lord. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery, because you love the man that's the husband of that woman. So you'll not commit adultery because you love her too. You don't want to do anything with her that you'll bring forth her imperfection and make her to sin and then miss heaven. Are you a woman? If you love a man, the man is so nice and good. Well, nice and good, you love him. That you don't want him to get to hell. You will not offer your flesh, your body, because you know, I, I love him, that's not your husband. I love her, that's not your wife. You'll not offer your body in expressing your appreciation for them. Because if you do that, you're actually sending them to hell. And you're making them useless in the kingdom of God because you make them backsliders. Love does not offer your body to another person. I love you. No, you hate them. 
by sending them to hell. It says, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, love walketh no ill, no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 14. Galatians 5, 14. All the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In verse 16, it says, This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh verse 19 in verse 19 now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery of the flesh fornication of the flesh uncleanness of the flesh lasciviousness of the flesh verse 20 verse 20 says idolatry witchcraft hatred Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. Verse 21. In verse 21, envies and murders and drunkenness and revelings, 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 and such like of the weak. I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they members of the church that they members outside the church that they so-called believers that they those who testify loud i am born again i am saved that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god verse 22 in verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love pure love not fleshly love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, verse 23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. In verse 24, it says, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh. Those who truly belong to Christ, those who are born again, those who are saved, those who are bad.